Good morning. Hayim Yim Yud Zayin El. So in the year that Hayim Yim was published in 1943, so Yud Zayin El fell out on Friday, Shabbos Parshas Kisave. And on Friday, Shabbos Parshas Kisave, and Shishi of Parshas Kisave, so we read the Techecha, we read a long list of curses, a long list of 98 curses which Hashem says, which will come on the Jewish people if they fail to keep the Torah. A natural consequence of not keeping the Torah is all these terrible things will happen. And today's Yom Yim, the Rebbe tells us a very interesting story about this Torah Riddick. And he says, Rabbeinu Hazakin Hayuba'atzmei HaKerah B'Tayra. Usually, the Alts Rebbe used to read the Torah himself. On Shabbos, he was the one who read the Torah. Pam Achas, Lo Yehoi Shabbos Parshas Kisave. One year, for whatever reason, he was not home in the town of Liyajna when it came Parshas Kisave. And therefore, somebody else got up to read the Torah. Vishama Admar Hamtsay and the Alter of his son, the Mitzler Rebbe, who was there, and he was obviously in Shul, who I denu nar kedem bar mitzvah, and he was still a boy; he wasn't even bar mitzvah yet, but he was obviously in Shul, and he was listening to the Torah reading. And Hakriim Acher, he heard the Torah from this other person reading it. Ha'agmas nefesh mehaklolish shabitechecha havi atu lechev lev, and when he heard the reading, when he heard the curses, he experienced such emotional distress. That he had an intense physical reaction and he physically became sick. To the point, that a few weeks later, when it came when it came Yom Kippur time, when it was approaching Yom Kippur time, the Alter Rebbe came back and he was not even sure if his son was strong enough and in a condition to fast on Yom Kippur. That's how sick he was, that's how badly he reacted. And they came to the Mitzvah Rebbe and Kishashalu was Admiram Tsai, Harry Bhoshana Karim Parshazu. They asked him, why did you react so badly? You've been in Shul every single year and you've heard this reading every single year. What was, what was the big deal this year? Why do you have this terrible reaction? And the Mithler Rebbe answered very interesting. Anna, he said, he said, he told them, When my father reads, when the Alter Rebbe reads, you don't hear kalis, you don't hear curses, you don't hear negativity. You see the deeper, true, beautiful meaning of the words and what it really means and the beautiful meaning of the words. You don't hear the kalis, what you feel is not the cloth, what you feel is not the negativity, you see the goodness within the words. And that's, that's the Hayyim, that's what the, that's the story, that's what the Mithra Rebbe said. And the Rebbe talked about the story quite a few times, and he said a few interesting points. So the first point he made is that, he says, we think that we live in this world and we were given the Torah. But it says that the is Torah precedes the world. And in fact, the Torah is an eternal truth, which discusses eternal truths, and then the world came into existence to help us um, carry out the Torah and fulfill the Torah. And therefore he said, pain and suffering and death and illness, all these things only came into existence in our physical world with the physical world. And if the Torah precedes the physical world and the Torah was around forever, then even when the Torah is describing pain and illness and, and all kinds of bad things and plague, it must, and suffering, it must be that it has a real, it has a different meaning, it has a, it has a deeper meaning. In this world, that's how we understand it, because we live in a world where all these things are possible. But if, again, if, if the Torah was around, and, and Parshish Kisabi was around, and Shishi and Parshish Kisabi was around, and the Techech was around long before this world came into existence, long before pain and suffering came into existence, then it has to be that there's a different meaning, and it's not describing pain and suffering, so those things didn't exist. Rather, it's describing eternal truth, it's describing deeper, um, deeper and, and truth of the universe, and deeper, deeper experiences, and deeper things. And that's the true meaning, and it has a, it has a re if you understand the depth of the words and what it really means, it's actually describing a very positive, good thing. So that's one interesting point he made. Um, point number two he made is that it says actually in Hasidus that nothing bad ever comes from Hashem. And Hashem never does anything bad to us. And when he does good things to us, that's an expression of his love, that's an expression of bracha, and he, he's trying to help us and give us an expression of, of, um, of, of his love and he's channeling blessings to us. Though, when Hashem wants to express deeper levels of love and he wants to channel to us more intense blessings, so often that will come in the form of pain or suffering or what we call negative events. And to us it seems negative on the surface if we take it at face value, but that is actually any pain you experience or any, anything hard or dark is actually a deeper expression of Hashem's love and is a more intense bracha. And the Rebbe said here for a very interesting reason why this is so, so he said, because when Hashem wants to give you such intense brachas, when Hashem wants to express His love so deeply, so He packages that specifically in a 
in, in curses, he packages that specifically in suffering because he says that way the satan and the negative energies in the world will not try to disrupt the flow, will not try to interfere because they think that this is evil and negative and trying to hurt you. And Hashem sneaks it in, so to speak, in that packaging. That's one, that's one interesting thing he said. Now, another thing he said, a very, very interesting thing, he touched the words, the Mittler said, which literally means, when my father reads, then you don't hear the kolis, you don't hear the curses. But the Rebbe touched that Hashem is our father. Hashem is our father. It says that Hashem is our father. We are literally Hashem's children. And once you realize that, and you realize that any normal father hates to see, any normal parent hates to see their child in pain. The, the child hurting or in pain is the worst, it's intolerable for the parent. That's the worst possible thing. They can't stand seeing their child in pain. Now, us physical parents, so sometimes, sometimes something else is causing pain to our child and we have to, we try to prevent it and stop it and leave it, but if we can't, we just sit there and suffer with them and watching them suffer. And then anytime that we are the ones who are inflicting the pain, anytime we give them a shot or, or do something which causes them pain or distress, so obviously since we love them and it hurts us more than it even hurts them to see them in pain, so obviously we're doing it for good reason and we're actually trying to help them. Now they don't, may not realize it, they might be too small, small minded to realize that, but of course we're trying to help them. Now once you realize that Hashem is our father, Hashem is our parent, and Hashem controls the world, which means nothing ever happens outside of Hashem's control, which means Hashem is the one who makes everything happen in the world. So anytime you're suffering, so you have to realize two things. One, you have to realize that Hashem made that happen. And Hashem loves you to the end of the earth and it actually hurts Hashem to see you suffer more than it, hurt, than, more than it hurts you to, see, to feel yourself suffer. And because of that, if Hashem chose to make you suffer in some way, or you're, is obviously to help you and is obviously to help you in some way, and to, it's good for you. And once you realize that basically, and this is trying to actually help you in some way, once you realize that that Abba Kaira, once you realize that these words in the Torah, these curses in the word in the Torah, they're the words of Abba, they're the words of our Father. It's Hashem saying these words. It's Hashem who's the source of these, of these curses. Then you then you're able to appreciate and start seeing and start sensing the actual, the deeper kavana here, the deeper meaning and the deeper purpose of these painful experiences. Now the last point that I've been made is interesting, which is that in Hasidus it says one of two things, which are a little bit contradictory, or I guess one's just a little deeper than the next. So it says suffering, so there's two ways to look at it. So like we said, suffering is always an intense expression of Hashem's, um, a deeper expression of Hashem's love for us, and, and it's more intense blessings. But, but one way Hasidus explains is that always, 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 the curses just appear bad superficially, but they're always, always good. They're always really blessings, and they're always going to lead to good. The other, the other, the other, the other idea that Chassidus sometimes says is that it's true that all curses are really intense energy and very intense potential good and positive energy. But if that energy is channeled right and properly understood and channeled in the right way, then it leads to incredible bracha, and it's Hashem sneaking in incredible bracha. If though that energy, that intense energy, becomes for whatever reason, it becomes um, ch channeled in a wrong way, then it can lead actually to actually negative things or curses. So it says when the Alter Rebbe used to read the, the when the Alter Rebbe used to read the Torah, so he was channeling these energies in the right way, and therefore it actually just led to awesomeness and, and led to brachis. When this other random guy read the Torah, so when you read the Torah, that's powerful. You're, you're, when you're saying those words, those words actually serve as a channel for that energy. So the Mitzvah ever saw this guy reading the Torah, and he didn't, he, he, he wasn't channeling, he wasn't understanding the words right, and therefore he wasn't channeling the energy right, and it was actually leading to very painful events. And that's why the Mitzvah was so distressed. Even though he knew all these concepts, this guy was actually causing um, pain and suffering. So God bless you, and have a wonderful day.